okay uh, today's topic is the properties of chain area the in mechanics uh, there's a direct uh, relationship between the behavior of a of an object in place of forces and the properties of plane area that mean uh, if we are having the data of uh, properties of plane area we can predict uh, its behavior and also we can calculate its uh, deformation and so on for example uh, if you take a uh, shaft subjected to a toe then uh, its deformation and its uh, polar second moment of a uh, cross section polar second moment of in the relationship if the shaft having the higher polar second moment it means it is uh, resistance to twist okay it is resistant to twist the another example uh, if you take a, a bending application uh, for certain around certain axis uh, second moment of area is a greater mean it is resistant to bend around the axis okay the same as uh, then other properties also have in uh, relationship for example the area so it's very simple uh, property area if the area is greater stress is reduces if the area is greater pressure reduces so there's a, a relationship between this uh, properties of plane area and the behavior of an object in face of uh, acting of forces so uh, knowing this uh, uh, knowledge about this uh, properties of plane area is important because uh, in uh, bending stress calculation the torsion calculation and also the calculation of stresses we need to calculate first we need to calculate this uh, properties of plane area so then today we are going to discuss how to calculate this uh, properties of plane area for certain given cross section okay okay let's move to the theory of this uh, under this uh, topic okay Okay, uh, the today's topic is uh, properties of plane area. The properties of plane area under this uh, properties of plane area, we are going to discuss uh, these properties. The first one, the area. First one, the area. Then uh, second property. First moment of area. Second property. So third property. Second moment of area then the uh, last one polar second moment of area area okay polar second moment of area these are the things we are going to discuss uh, under properties of plane area so then how we define the area first let's take the first one Let's take the first one. Area. What is area? How we define the area? For so let's take the certain area. Let's take this uh, coordinate system x y. Let's take this kind of uh, area. Then how we calculate the area? Area a for this figure. What is the method to calculate this area? The area is given by integral if you take the small surface area dA integral all over the surface area dA gives the total surface area of the this figure okay this is how we are calculating the total area of the figure then there is a uh, 
several the actually when calculating this uh, using this integral method there's a five method to uh, cover entire area by moving this uh, small da surface area around this uh, given figure let's see this uh, five methods okay okay then uh, first method let's take this the coordinate system okay then let's take this this is the given uh, area so then the dx d the x coordinate system y coordinate system this d a surface area we can write in this way dx into dy this length dx this length dy okay then we can use to uh, area we can calculate in this way by giving the double integral d a okay d that means a is equal double integral dx t y okay then we have to give limit for the x variable and the y variable how we can vary x variable and the y variable to cover entire surface area okay then we have to give by giving the limit we should be able to cover entire surface area okay this is the first method uh, we can calculate the total surface area using the this integral method okay then the secondary we can use the polar coordinate system secondary we can use the polar coordinate system the second method i think you all familiar with this uh, polar coordinate system okay then uh, this is the surface area we are considering then uh, let's take uh, surface area from a r distance away from the uh, for this center let's take this distance as r then uh, this thickness dr then this da surface area we can write in this way da surface area then uh, this is uh, theta this is d theta okay then this uh, da surface area da surface area is equal r d theta into dr r d theta into dr again you can see the two uh, variables theta and r in a polar coordinate system in this method also we have, we have to use the double integral r d theta into dr by uh, by varying the theta variable and the r variable we should be able to cover entire surface area then we can obtain the uh, total uh, surface area in this method okay by putting the limit we should be able to cover entire surface area in that situation we can use this polar coordinate system easily calculate the Uh, surface area okay then uh, next one in the third method in the third method we can use the single strip like uh, area single strip like area for example let's take uh, this kind of uh, okay in this situation uh, we can uh, define in the strip like uh, small da surface area let's take uh, this is x coordinate axis y coordinate axis if we know these two if we know these two values x2 uh, and x1 
you can easily define the da surface area in this way da surface area is equal x2 minus x1 into uh, dy okay then we can calculate the total area uh, a is equal integral x2 minus x1 into dy the y we have to vary from this portion to this portion in this integral the x1 and x2 uh, if it is not a fixed value it's, those are variable we have to write it from the y uh, variables we should be able to write it from the y variable otherwise we can't integral okay then the fourth method the similar to this one similar to this one if you can define a, the da surface area parallel to the y coordinate direction parallel to the y coordinate direction in this way this height this one x2 this is x1 then the d surface area we can define in this a da is equal x2 minus sorry this is y y2 minus y1 into d x so then the total area is equal integral uh, y2 minus y1 into dx in this situation also y1 and y2 we have to write it from the uh, x variable for the integral then the third method defining the the third method also using the polar coordinate system we can uh, use the polar coordinate system the fifth method to find the area in the integral methods fifth method let's take uh, this kind of area okay then uh, this is the area da surface area small surface area we are considering okay this is theta this is d theta da surface area is equal da surface area is equal let's take this uh, length as r half into that mean uh, this da surface area mean this uh, triangular sur uh, surface area no surface area half into this uh, this length as r uh, half into r into r d theta that means the da surface area is equal half into r square d theta half into r square d theta same way we can calculate the total area by varying the r and theta by taking this uh, triangle around this uh, by varying theta around this uh, center we can cover entire surface area so in that way we have to define the limits okay half into r square into d theta okay these are the five method we can use to find the surface area using integral methods okay first one uh, define the two uh, dx and dy polar coordinate system uh, using only y uh, only one variable y variable then uh, using only y uh, x variable varying uh, defining the one uh, integral limit for the one variable then again the polar coordinate system defining the triangular shape uh, area okay then let's uh, see the example problem from this uh, area calculation okay let's uh, see some uh, example vision from this one Okay, can you obtain the equation uh, to calculate the uh, area of a circle? A 
area of a circle using the polar coordinate system using polar polar coordinate system so how to obtain this one you know already know the area for the circle is equal 5 r square let's see how to obtain this equation let's take this uh, circular area first okay then uh, let's take uh, to the r distance i am going to define the d a surface area this length is equal r then this d a surface area is equal r d theta into dr r d theta into dr okay then let's take this uh, radius as r capital r okay then uh, let's assign the polar coordinates system then this angle as theta this angle is d theta okay to cover entire surface area what we have to do we are using the total surface area a is equal integral all over the surface area d okay this is our definition then a is equal we have to i'm going to put uh, i'm going to put uh, a is equal double integral d a r d theta into d r so then how the theta have to vary to cover entire surface area from 0 to 2 5 by varying the 0 to 2 5 we can cover this kind of ring shape area ring shape area This kind of ring shape area we can cover when uh, varying theta from 0 to 2 5. So then the r we have to vary from 0 to capital R. 0 to capital R. This is how we are defined the limit to cover entire surface area in this polar coordinate system. Then we can simplify further this one. Uh, r we can take it out from the this integral sign it is uh, constant considering uh, this integration that 2 5 dr okay then a is equal 0 so the uh, 2 5 we can take it out from the integral sign the r into dr is equal 2 5 r square divided by 2 into 0 to r okay so then uh, a is equal the 5 r square okay this is how we are calculating the uh, area of a circle using the polar coordinate system using the double integral method okay. let's move to the next uh, property plane area property called uh, first moment of area first moment of area first moment of area the the second property we are discussing second property area property we are discussing the symbol used is the q always this uh, second moment uh, first moment of area defining with respect to a certain axis okay so this axis we are putting in subscript letter so uh, subscript letter that mean uh, the first moment of area around the x-axis q x first moment of area around the y axis q y 
first moment of area around the z axis q z like that we are using the subscript letter to indicate the axis uh, considered take the uh, when calculating the first moment of area okay then let me define the first moment of area first okay let me define the first moment of area okay first moment of area let me define the first uh, coordinate system let's take this kind of uh, surface area x and the y okay. x and the y first moment of area the q x we are defining in this way q x is equal let's take uh, this kind of d a surface area okay then to the centroid of this da surface area the distance from the y x axis let's take it as the y y is the variable that mean uh, y the distance from the x axis to the centroid of this da surface area then the q y is equal yeah i will write in this way d q x d q x mean first moment produced due to this da surface area dqx mean the first moment due to this da surface area so th that is equal to y into da y into da then how to calculate the total uh, first moment around the x axis that means the qx is equal integral all over the surface area y into d a, y into d a. okay okay moment due to area moment due to area okay. at the same way we can define the uh, first moment around the uh, y axis d q y is equal <coughs> distance from y axis to the centroid of this da surface area let's take it as x okay integral sorry uh, x into da x into da then the uh, total first moment around the y axis equal integral all over the surface area x into da x into da this is how we are calculating the first moment of area for a given uh, surface area okay uh, then let's see the with the first moment of area we can discuss the centroid of a area okay centroid of a area what is my the centroid centroid of an area okay what is by the centroid the centroid mean the geometric center of the area is called a centroid okay geometric center of the area that mean uh, geometric center mean i will explain this one geometric center let's take this kind of uh, surface area a magnitude is a okay it produces certain moment around the x axis that amount is equal q x is equal integral a y into t then the q y is equal integral all over the surface area x into d okay then the centroid mean centroid mean if you can concentrate this area to a point centroid mean if you can concentrate this area to a point where we have to place this point area to get the same qx and qy that point is called centroid central centroidal point okay in other way you can say the point which gives same qx and qy 
when placing the concentrated a area to a point that point is called centroid okay centroid that mean here this is the area this is the uh, according to that uh, definition i am going to elaborate this uh, thing further this is the qx and qy for this area so then uh, according to our definition so i am going to concentrate this uh, area to a point this is the a area okay this is you so this a area also should be able to produce the qx and qy this uh, point area also should be able to produce qx and qy same qx and qy in here that mean let's take this is the distance these are the distance to the uh, from the x axis the y axis this is uh, y bar x bar that mean a y bar should equal to a y bar should equal to a y bar should equal to integral all over the surface area y into b okay at the same time a x bar should equal to integral all over the surface area x into d okay that is how we are defining the uh, centroid okay because the this concentrated area also should be able to produce if we if we place this uh, concentrated area to a, a centroidal point it also should be able to produce qx and qy same qx and qy so in that way this distance we can uh, make into subject y bar is equal y bar is equal y bar is equal integral a y into d a divided by a x bar is equal integral a x into d a divided by a this way we can find the y bar and x bar that mean uh, distance to the centroid from the axis y bar and x bar we can define in this way okay we can further we can uh, write uh, more convenient way these two equations in this way y bar is equal integral all over the surface area y into d a divided by integral all over the surface area into d this is y bar okay then at the same time the x bar is equal x bar is equal integral all over the surface area x into d a divided by integral all over the surface area d a this is we are finding this is how we are finding uh, x bar and y bar that mean the centroid if you know the x bar and y bar that we can locate the centroidal point no okay the the we can uh, we know how to what is in the centroidal point the some uh, geometric shapes uh, i'll if you take a circle if you take a circle we have the centroid point geometric center at the we the geometric center if you take a, a rectangle we have the geometric center at the intersection of two symmetric axes this is called the geometric center okay then uh, if you take a semicircle if you take a semicircle the geometric center lies on this uh, one of the symmetric axis and the y axis its distance is equal 4r divided by 35 okay Four divided by three. You have to remember these uh, values. You have to remember these values. And if we take the uh, 
triangle that these two sides are equal then uh, the centroid at the on this symmetric axis and the distance from the y axis this uh, height is equal h divided by 3 h divided by 3. If, we the, if we take the right triangle triangle right angle triangle mm -hmm. the center in somewhere in here the distance from the y axis let's take this is x this is y y bar is equal y bar means this height y bar this is x bar y bar is equal y bar is equal b divided by 3 and the x bar is equal h divided by 3 the b mean this uh, distance called the b this is h okay this is h then uh, so for any triangle for this kind of triangle let's take this is b this height of the triangle as h and uh, distance from this point to this one of the n let's see as c simple c simple h simple b x bar is equal x bar is equal b plus c divided by 3 and the y bar is equal h divided by 3 h divided by 3 c okay the here y bar is measured uh, from this uh, axis y bar x bar is measured from this axis to the distance x bar okay the, at least we have to remember this uh, areas when you are doing the calculation uh, will be more helpful if you can remember this uh, central point okay okay then uh, let's move to how to calculate the uh, centroid of a composite sections composite section mean section composed by uh, several areas composed from several areas for example if we, if we the, for this surface area we can directly say the where the centroid point we can no problem but if the for example if uh, something like this let's take this is the rectangle and they are also area is connected with the semicircle so this is this is a component composite section composite section composite area okay composite area so when we are when you are going to calculate the composite area let's see how to uh, calculate this the first moment of area second moment of area and centroidal point for the composite section okay I will explain it uh, using the, the example okay. I will explain uh, it using the one of the example okay. then let's take the previous uh, one also example okay. You want to calculate the uh, centroidal point uh, of this kind of figure. Mm 
this is the semicircle the radius is uh, radius is r simple r then uh, how to calculate the centroid point how to calculate the central point let's uh, define the axis also let's define the axis also y axis x axis okay so no problem we can directly say because it having the one of the symmetric axis the, by looking at this figure we can directly say the, the centroid points lie on this symmetric axis okay we can directly say that means we can directly say this uh, value that this value is uh, the x bar x bar is equal to r so then how to calculate the y bar it is the problem okay then uh, you can see this figure the first moment the first moment of entire surface area is equal to moment produced by uh, sum of the moment produced by each and every component in uh, mechanics also in moment calculation also you know the moment produced by the res resultant force equal to the summation of uh, moment produced by individual force components okay the same theory we can apply in here the moment produced by the entire area is equal to the summation of moment produced by each and every component separately okay that is the theory we can use to calculate this one so i am taking this uh, somewhere in this kind of uh, position let's take this is uh, y bar distance from the x axis the y bar is equal total area so uh, y bar into total area is equal to q x the first moment of area around the x axis okay that also should be equal to the summation of moment produced by each and every component so i am going to take this uh, component separately this is the first component this is the second component what is the moment produced by the first component what is the consider the first component this is the centroid point no what is the moment produced by the first component let's take the one of the dimension is missing let's take this is l what is the total area 2r into l then the length to the its centroid l divided by 2 l divided by 2 this is the moment uh, produced by rectangular section okay first element plus plus moment produced by this uh, semicircular one around the x axis plus so what is the uh, area 5r square divided by 2 then uh, what is this distance area i we have given this value 4r divided by 3 5 from the x axis what is the distance total distance to this point l plus l plus 4r divided by 3 5 l plus 4r divided by 3 5 so then we can calculate the uh, y bar y bar is equal r l square plus 5 r square divided by 2 l plus 4 r divided by 3 5 divided by total surface area the total surface area a is equal l into 2 r plus 5 r square divided by 2 this is how we can calculate the y bar okay 
in that way we can calculate the uh, polar segment of area of a composite sections composite sections okay, okay. then i am going to go for the third property uh, third property second moment of area second moment of area the second moment of area also a important property if we know the second moment of area we can predict the stiffness of the structure resistant to bend okay resistant to bend okay then uh, let's take let me take the certain area the y and the x Let's take this is the area we are going to consider okay then uh, second moment of area also we are defining with respect to a certain axis so symbol use is i okay symbol use is i then uh, if it is defined with respect to a x axis we are writing i x if you are defining that one with respect to y axis i y if we define in the second moment of area with respect to z axis we are using the i z cup skill letter if i defining uh, if you are defining a, a second moment of area on a specific axis around a specific axis we are using i x x like that okay okay then this is the definition let's, let's take the definition let's take uh, d a surface area to the centroidal point from the x axis let's take it as the y then i x we are defining in this way integral all over the surface area y square d a this is how we are defining the second moment of area around the x axis then the second moment of area around the y axis i y defining in this way integral all over the surface area x square d a x, x square d a okay this is the definition for the second moment of area okay then uh, let's do some uh, example from this uh, second moment of area okay at the same time we can define the uh, radius of gyration the what is the radius of gyration it's uh, mostly similar to the centroidal point okay mostly similar to the centroidal point that means to get the same uh, i value same i value the ready, uh, okay to get the same ix and iy iy value where we have to place this concentrated a area on this two dimensional plane that point is called uh, distance from this axis to that point is called radius of gyrations okay radius of gyrations okay that mean the if we place this uh, if we place this concentrated mass on this uh, point okay then let's take this uh, dimensions as k here this uh, y axis this is uh, 
y axis this is x axis k y k x okay if you place this uh, concentrated area to a point and then to get the same i x and i y value th these uh, values are called the k x and k y values are called the radius of gyrations of the area okay Here the kx and ky we can calculate in this way. The i y is equal k x square into a. Okay, that is also equal to integral a x square d a. Okay, then the kx if we can make the kx into subject i y divided by a into square root okay. at the same time we can write for the k y i x divided by area into square root okay. k x and k y okay. okay let's move to the example from the second mount of area Well, example then let's see how to calculate the second mount of area for rectangular cross section around the symmetric axis let's take uh, these are the coordinate axes let's take we have to calculate around x axis okay around x axis okay then uh, what is our definition i x is equal integral all over the surface area y square d a for the i x so let me define uh, d a surface area in this way d a surface area is equal let's take uh, these uh, dimensions as uh, d and h d and h d is equal here this uh, strip plus dy d into dy okay then the i x is equal integral y square the distance from the x-axis to the considering da surface area is y y square d d y from uh, to cover entire surface area y we have to vary from this position to this position so according to our uh, coordinate axis uh, this dimension is equal minus h over 2 then this dimension is called plus h over 2 that means we have to vary from minus h over 2 to plus h over 2 the y square and the b we can take it out from the integral sign is a constant the dy okay then i x is equal b y into q divided by 3 minus h over 2 plus h over 2 Okay. Then uh, we can further simplify this one. And further simplify this one. I x is equal d over three h divided by two into q minus minus h over two into okay i x is equal b divided by 3 2 into 3 uh, 2 into 3 mean 8 h into q divided by 8 plus h into q divided by 8 
Okay. Then uh, I x is equal b h q divided by two. This is the equation. Calculate the i x around the rectangular section. X is passes to the centroid. At the same time, by similarly we can calculate. For the equation, uh, we can obtain the equation for the uh, i y h b q divided by two h b q divided by two. Okay, this is how we are calculating the uh, second amount of area for rectangular section. Okay, uh, let's see how to solve this uh, sample. Uh, determine the moment of uh, inertia of, a, of the shaded area shown in figure about the x-axis. Okay, about the x-axis. Okay, when you are going to calculate this one, okay, yeah. then how to calculate? So let's move to our definition. I x is equal integral all of the surface area y squared e. Okay, we have to define the uh, surface area d a surface area. We have to define the d a surface area. We define this. Uh, then uh, first, uh, let's look at this uh, arc. The y square. Uh, is equal 400 into x this point uh, if we substitute this 100 we can uh, calculate this height as the 200 okay no need to give this uh, value the 200 we can substitute the x value and then you can find the y okay then uh, d a surface area d is the surface area i'm going to consider and the, this uh, thickness the dy this thickness is dy then the centroidal point to the and the distance between central point and the x-axis of this strip let's take it as the y okay let's take it as the y then what is the length of this strip from this axis to this one the 200 millimeter no? 200 millimeter for this point so then uh, distance uh, at the y height this is called the x x value at the y the x value the 200 minus x the strip length in the da we can calculate in this way at, uh, sorry 100 minus x into dy 100 minus x into dy so i'm going to substitute in this uh, equation the ix is equal ix is equal integral uh, y square integral y square into 100 minus x into dy why we how we can vary the y to cover entire surface area from 0 to 200 0 to 200 okay 0 to 200 then this i x we have to write i x we have to write the 0 to 200 then here the integral variable is the y y square then uh, 100 minus the x we have to write it from the uh, y value so then the y square divided by 400 this in this equation into dy okay use your calculators to find this uh, integration so the you will find uh, the value the this is in millimeters 
hundred and seven into ten to the power of six millimeter into four. Check this answer. Okay. Check this answer. So the millimeter into four. Okay. This is how we are calculating the determining the uh, second moment of area for a given area. Okay, then uh, let's move to how to calculate the second moment of area for a composite sections. Composite sections. Okay, composite sections. Same as in uh, previously we discussed. Composite section. The in a when we are discussing the first. Uh, okay, before going to the calculating the composite section, uh, let me do some. Uh, yeah, if you take a rectangular section. So I'm going to give some uh, known uh, geometrical shape second moment of areas. Okay. If you take uh, the axis passes to the centroidal point, i x value is equal. If this dimension as the b into h, we can write one over twelve the b h cube. Okay. If it is a circle, if it is a circle, we can write its uh, i x is equal uh, five r into four divided by four. Five r into four divided by four. Radius is uh, okay. Then uh, for the semicircle, for the semicircle, the radius r i value is equal i yeah. The, let's take this is the centroidal point, and let me define the coordinate axis for this uh, semicircle. I x, I y, I x is equal the approximate value. The, they are given the approximate value, the zero point. One zero nine eight into r into four, and the i y value is equal five r into four divided by eight. Okay. Then uh, triangle. If you take the triangle, the these two sides are equal. Then uh, let's take this centroidal point. Then uh, coordinate axis passes through this uh, centroidal point. X and the y. I x is equal b h cube divided by thirty six. Okay. I y is equal H B cube divided by forty eight. Here, this is the B. This is the H. Okay. At least uh, you have to remember these uh, values. Uh, these four values. The these four figures values you have to remember when doing the problems. That is very important. Okay. Okay, then uh, let's move to how to calculate the second moment of area for composite sections. Okay, calculating the second moment of area for composite sections.
area four composite area the composite area mean the area also i uh, explain what is my the composite area the area formed by known uh, geometric shape called the composite area okay composite area then uh, for example let's take uh, uh, this kind of uh, example composite area yeah, okay uh, when uh, calculating the uh, second amount of area for the composite area for considering we have to divide that uh, total area to a uh, different non geometric shapes we have to divide that will be the given area we have to divide into a non geometric shapes if this non geometric shape uh, two axes are lying together then we can directly add or subtract these uh, set amount of area values okay we can directly add or subtract so let me give one example for this uh, situation let's take this example okay this is the rectangular section let's take this uh, width as capital b let's take this height as capital h then again another section in this way this uh, b simple h okay so then you can see we, then we want to calculate the ix Then the one, the one uh, symmetric axis. If, if this passes through the centroidal point, that means one of the symmetric axis. Okay. Then here you can see this is the hole. See the hole. This is the rectangular one. Then uh, we have to calculate the amount of area for this uh, considering surface area. In that situation, you can see the two figures are there. Two areas are there. The larger rectangle one and the smaller rectangle one. In this situation, we can subtract. You can see the uh, smaller rectangular area, second amount of area, and uh, larger rectangular second amount of area. The both the axes are lying on same axis. Okay. So in that situation, uh, we can uh, subtract directly to get the resultant uh, second amount of area. So in th that that, that means i x we can directly calculate. So what is the for the larger rectangular area what is the value 1 over 12 capital b h into q then we can subtract this whole area second amount of area 1 over 12 the b h q okay then we can get the result see the answer we can do the we can subtract to add in this way only if you are calculating individual component area on the same axis only in that situation we can subtract to it okay only in that situation we can subtract to it this is one of the method to calculate the uh, composite section second amount of area for the composite section okay the situation where if not these uh, two uh, axes are not aligned together so we have to use the some other methods so one of the method is use of parallel axis theorem okay i will explain this uh, first i will explain this uh, parallel axis theorem okay Parallel axis theorem. Parallel axis theorem. Okay. So let's take the 
cervecería let's take the cervecería in this way for this cervecería let's take the centroid point as C again let me define this coordinate as x and y then the again the the coordinate axis which is uh, passes through this centroidal point parallel to this uh, original uh, coordinate axis let's take it as x dash and the y dash okay the x dash axis is parallel to the x axis y dash axis is parallel to the y axis okay in that situation uh, the this parallel axis theorem says i x is equal i x is equal i x dash plus a d square okay this parallel axis theorem says this parallel axis theorem says Theorem says i x is equal i x dash plus a d square. If you know the uh, second moment of area around this axis, then we can calculate. If you know the area and the distance between these parallel axes, then we can calculate the uh, second moment of area around this axis. That is the thing in saying in parallel axis theorem. Okay. That means we can use this uh, parallel axis theorem to transfer a second moment of, moment of area in between the parallel axes. That means if we know the parallel uh, second moment of area around this axis, we can transfer it to this axis. Okay. Then uh, let's see how to prove this uh, parallel axis theorem. Okay. Let's see how to prove this parallel axis theorem. Okay. Then uh, actually, what is uh, I x? i x is equal let's take the uh, angle take this surface area d a surface area d a surface area integral all over the surface area sorry let's take this uh, central point to the distance as y y square d a y square d a okay y square d a Okay. Then uh, here it is. Uh, what is mean the y? What is mean the y? Here y is equal the d plus. Let's take from this x dash axis to the centroidal axis of the d s surface area. Let's take it as the y dash. Y is equal d plus y dash. D plus y dash. Okay. Then i x is equal. Instead of this y, I am going to put this one. D plus y dash into square integral all over the surface area into d. Okay. So then I am going to ex expand this uh, expression. I x is equal y dash square plus 2 d y dash plus d square d a integral all over the surface area okay then we can further simplify this one then we, we can further simplify this one i x is equal integral all over the surface area y dash square d a plus uh, 2d we can take it out from the integral sign because it's a constant integral all of the surface area y dash into da plus the d square integral all of the surface area into d okay into d then here what is where this one what is similar this one? If you take this 
term it mean i x dash it mean i x dash so what is mean this term a d square a d square okay a d square so what is mean by this term okay what is mean by this term is a first moment of area around what axis x dash axis x dash axis is the first moment of area around the x dash axis so what is the value of this one the moment around the centroid the moment around the centroid is equal to 0 this term is equal to 0 okay so then we can uh, write this equation in this way i x is equal i sorry, i x dash plus a t square this is the uh, derivation of uh, parallaxis theorem then this uh, parallaxis theorem we can use when calculating the uh, second amount of area for composite sections okay let's uh, let me uh, take some example from this uh, parallaxis theorem okay example okay let's take this example from the uh, calculation of uh, second amount of area for composite section the calculate the second amount of area for the following figure around uh, x axis okay. this is x axis ix we have to calculate ix we have to calculate but then how to calculate this one here you can see the figure this is a rectangular section and it having the whole section whole section the rectangular section dimensions the capital H height the capital B width and uh, R uh, radius uh, hole is there then uh, at distance h over 4 h over 4 half of this uh, length h over 4 length there's a hole so then how to calculate the uh, second moment of area for in this situation we are used the actually we are used the parallaxis theorem then uh, first uh, tell me let's take uh, axis x dash y dash that means the axis uh, defined with respect to the circle as x dash y dash what is i x dash i x dash is equal what is the equation I gave this equation 5 r into 4 divided by 4 ok so then uh, this is the whole because this is because this is a whole we have to subtract when taking the resultant uh, second amount of area that means we are what we are going to do from this uh, larger rectangular section we are going to subtract this uh, whole uh, second amount of area by taking this whole second amount area to this axis okay to transfer this uh, second amount of area to this axis we are using the parallaxis theorem okay the actually what is uh, uh, for the larger rectangular section for for figure figure 1 i x is equal this x okay i x is equal 1 over 12 into d h q okay so then uh, if we transfer this uh, Second amount of area to the axis, what is the value? For the circular section, for circle, for circle, i x is equal, use the parallaxis theorem, what is parallax i x dash plus a d square, no? i x is equal for the circular section. 
आई एक्स इज इक्वल फाइव आर फोर डिवाइड बाई फोर प्लस ए फाइव आर स्क्वा इंटू डी द डिस्टेंस एच डिवाइड बाई फोर इंटू स्क्वा ओके सो दिन दिस इज द सेकेंड मोमेंट ऑफ एरिया अराउंड दिस एक्सिस फॉर सर्कुलर सेक्शन ओके सो द नाउ द बोथ वी आर हैविंग द सेम एक्सिस then we can subtract or add whatever the subtraction or addition we can do that mean the final answer is for the entire figure ix value is equal for the entire rectangle around this axis 1 over 2 the bh cube so then subtract the circular area so the amount of area after transferring to this axis 5 r into 4 divided by 4 plus 5 r square h divided by 4 into square okay this is the example from the parallax axis theorem i think you more clear with this uh, the parallax axis theorem with the with this example so what we did we took the entire uh, rectangular section area then we uh, calculate the the circular area circular amount of area around this axis then we transfer it to this axis and get the uh, subtraction with the larger area okay okay let's move to the next uh, area property we are going to discuss the polar second moment of area the polar second moment of area okay polar second moment of area let me take uh, let's see the definition for this uh, for the second moment of area let's take this kind of uh, surface area x axis the y axis then uh, let's we define the small surface area da surface area da surface area then uh, from the actually it also uh, define with respect to a certain axis so j is the symbol used for the polar second moment of area uh we are using the subscript letter o the o mean that we are defining the polar second moment of area axis passes to the axis perpendicular passes to the o coordinate center okay o coordinate center that it, it, that mean we are calculating the polar second moment of area around the z axis okay then uh, from the o point to the centroidal point of the da the distance is taken as the r okay then this is the definition for the polar second moment of area uh, j not is equal integral all over the surface area r is for da this is the definition for the polar uh, second moment of area polar second moment of area okay then uh, let me obtain another important equation another important equation from this uh, equation this is uh, x this is y r is equal x square plus y square square root okay then the r square is equal x square plus y square okay so then you can if you put this uh, r square in this equation the j not is equal j not is equal x square plus y square da integral all over the surface area what it means j not is equal integral a x square plus 
integral a y square dA. What it means? D naught is equal. What is this one? Integral all over the surface area x square dA i y i y plus i x. This is another important relationship. The J naught is equal i x plus i y. Okay, i x plus i. Then uh, let's uh, take the example from this uh, polar second moment of area. Let's see how to calculate the polar second moment of area for circular cross section. For circular cross section. Let's take uh, this kind of a circular cross section. Okay, see the point O. X and Y. Okay. Then, uh, so I'm going to use the uh, polar coordinate system. This is my dA surface area. dA surface area is equal R uh, d theta. This is uh, d theta. d theta. This is R. R is the variable. Then that uh, circle section R is equal capital R. R d theta r d theta this is r r d theta into dr this is the da surface area so then what is our definition j naught is equal integral all of the surface area r square t a this is our definition then the j naught is equal j naught is equal J naught is equal R square R D theta into D R. Here then we have in the two variables we have to define uh, double integral. Then the theta we have to vary from 0 to 2 5 R we have to vary from 0 to R. Okay. First, uh, when we are varying uh, theta from 0 to 2 5, we can cover this kind of ring shape surface area. Ring shape surface area we can cover. Ring shape surface area we can cover. When varying the R from 0 to Capital R, we can cover, we can take this uh, ring shape surface area from center to circumference. So then we can cover, in that way we can cover entire surface area. D naught is equal. Uh, for this integral, we can take it out from the R into cube, we can take it out the integral sign. So then the D theta into uh, theta 0 to 2 5 dr integral. 0 to r j naught is equal j naught is equal 2 5 we can take it from the integral sign this uh, answer for this one so integral 0 to r r into 3 dr okay the j naught is equal r into cube 2 5 r into cube divided by so uh, r into 4 divided by 4 0 to r the finally we are getting the answer j naught is equal 5 divided by 2 capital r into 4 okay 
this is also equal to the if you take the r is equal uh, d by 2 r is equal d by 2 this is equal to uh, r into 4 mean is equal d 4 divided by 16 okay 5 d 4 over 32 okay 5 d 4 over 32 in the same way we can calculate the We can calculate the uh, polar second moment of area for the hollow cross sections. Hollow circular cross sections. Let's take uh, this kind of hollow cross section. Okay. This is uh, simple D. This is capital D. Okay. This is capital D. So the same uh, method we are using, same method we are using as previous, the J0 is equal integral all over the surface area R square dA. The same here the v, here in this situation R we have to vary from not 0 d by 2 to simple d by 2 to capital D by 2 then 0 to uh, 2 5 r into q d theta dr okay if we simplify this equation we will get 5 d4 minus simple d4 divided by 32 this is the answer for the uh, hollow cross sections hollow cross sections Well, this is all about the uh, uh, properties of a uh, plane area so far uh, we discuss so we discuss uh, we discuss uh, at the plane area uh, area we discuss uh, first moment of area we discuss and the second moment uh, moment of area we discuss and the polar second moment of area discuss that means these are properties of plane area if you know these uh, properties we can predict, we can calculate behavior of uh, structural components under different loading conditions. Okay, so in the last lecture, also we discussed the torsional analysis. You know, uh, if the shaft at the polar second moment of area is greater, mean it is resistant to twist for certain uh, cross section. So, uh, second amount of area is greater around a certain axis that means it is a resistant to bit bend around that axis okay the po uh, the polar second amount of area is greater mean it uh, resistance to twist the same way if uh, second moment of area is greater it resistant to bend if area is greater uh, stress is reduces like that so in that way, uh, this is a very important topic. Okay, thank you. Let's continue on next day class.